All right, John Oaks here at uh, Hankster's Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. And today here in our showroom, we're going to go over the newest addition to our inventory, and this being a 1967 Chevrolet Camaro RS, and it is a convertible. So again, I say RS, and it is a real RS, so that's the way this car came from the factory. So as you can see sitting here right now, this nice blue exterior in this car looks really nice, smooth, shiny paint all the way around. It's got the black Bumblebee nose stripe on it there too, along with all the RS badging. Um, it's also got this uh, fiberglass hood from Glass Tech. This would be like, a, uh, like the Stinger fiberglass hood. Um, but for fiberglass, this thing fits very, very nice. And uh, we'll see the whole thing as we walk around and then we'll actually open it up when we go over the edge and that way you get to see the whole underside and everything. But again, real nice fit in the hood. You can see the Rally Sport badging up on the sides of the hood there. Um, now all of the bright work on this car, um, don't need to necessarily point out every single thing, but the bumpers, the drip rail moldings, um, any of your lower body molding like on the rocker panels and so forth, all of that stuff is in really good condition. It's nice and straight, polished up very well, no dents, no dings. It all looks good on this car. And as you can see, they've upgraded wheels and tires on this too. So we, what we have here are 17-inch Riddler. These are chromed aluminum wheels here. And as far as tires, these are Sumitomo HTR Z3s. Now the sizes, we'll just let you kind of view that on the website. We'll have that all listed. Besides that, when we do the underside video, they'll be right there readily available. I'll go ahead and mention the tire sizes there. As we come back a little further, obviously we got the Camaro badging along with the 350 badging down there on the front fender as well, which is what's in the car, a 350 cubic inch motor. And again, we'll get to that here in just a little bit panel fitment and alignment on all of this car here. You can see the gaps here on the front and back side of the door here on the driver's side all look very uniform, very nice fit. As far as the elevations with the quarters and the fenders, very nice as well. Everything lines up and all the body lines line up. Our car has the mirror here on the driver's side and it is a remote mirror so you can adjust it from inside the car. And as far as our door handles, chrome door handles, and again, no pitting on those. Those all look good. Now, obviously, I mentioned it is a convertible, okay? So this has a white top. Looks very nice with the top up on it. Looks good with it down also. We'll open up our door. That way you can get to see the interior a little better than not with it open. Uh, inside, you'll see black interior. It's got the houndstooth upholstery on the front bucket seats as well as the rear bench has all of the uh, seat belts in there as well, retractable belts on the front as far as the lap belts go. Now as far as the dash, you can see factory dash, it is the padded dash, no cracks in any of the dash there at all, a sport style steering wheel, you can see it does have the factory heater controls, an aftermarket AM FM CD player in there as well with all the original factory instrumentation. Uh, it also has the factory four-speed center console in it um, and then we'll go over uh, once we get to the underside video we'll go through all of the drive line that way you'll get to know what we have in there as far as motor transmission rear end um, door panels everything all look great on this car all of the seals and weather stripping also all are in great condition there's no rips tears any pieces missing out of anything it's all in great shape and as you can see it's got the black boot for on the convertible top as well so that's the interior we'll close the door up door shut nice and easy as we come to the back side of the car again all the panels nice and straight the whole way around on this car um, you can see now back here first thing obviously to notice is going to be a rear trunk spoiler uh, and then the rear trunk itself the fitment the gaps, the elevations on that all look very good on this car. Down below here on our tail panel, as you can see, it's got a set of LED tail lights in it. The bezels and lenses are all in great shape on this. It's got the RS gas cap, along with a chrome bumper. And down below, you do have the correct rear lower balance for the RS car. 
that being that it's got the backup lights cut into it just as it should. Now we will go ahead, open our trunk lid up and show you down inside there. So first off, the key does work, latch works, the hinges and the spring all work. As you can see, underside of the trunk, painted the same blue as the exterior of the car. We've got the jack instructions up here just like it would have had originally. A full size spare in here. It's got the hold downs. It's got the lug uh, bit here for your wheels because it'll have a locking uh, lug nut on there. You've got books in here from the previous owners from you know as far as uh, what they might have done to the car there and so forth and what has it looks like some service manuals in there too also has the bumper jack in here you can see the whole trunk itself all one piece uh, trunk pan here no patching no holes all drain plugs all installed and your weather stripping as you look the whole way around here no rips tears nice and soft this is going to seal up very nice from the outside elements not to mention you've got the little uh, rubber bump stops here on the trunk so that when you close it it keeps everything nice and snug there doesn't bounce around or rattle around on you closes nice and easy too. come around the passenger side and again over here we just have all of the same stuff don't need to uh, go over all of it but when we get to the door here obviously we're going to look at the gaps front and back of that door again very uniform elevations all of that stuff all dead on on this car looks great now the one thing we didn't mention was and since it's a convertible we've got the top down obviously we've got all the windows down here so you can see the quarter windows do roll down and up the uh, door windows same thing door glass and all of the glass in this thing is in great shape there's no uh, no uh, chips no cracks in any of the glass nice looking uh, glass all the way around we'll look at the interior from the passenger side now and again just there's no uh no rips or tears in any of the upholstery your carpeting the rips tears are fading there um, everything just looks great in this car again i mentioned that center console again that is a four speed console and it does have the T10 four-speed manual transmission in it, which works fantastic on the car. Again, even over on this side, all of your weather stripping and seals and so forth, all in great shape. And that door shuts nice and easy too. Now as we come towards the front, again, it's got the fender mounted antenna. It's got all the matching badging over on this side, including the RS badging. And that'll bring us around to the front end of the car. Now again, as I said, this is a 67 RS, so you are going to have the RS or Rally Sport front grille assembly here. That's what you have here with the RS right in the center, and it has the hideaway headlights here also. So again, a very popular option. Makes the car look great, in my opinion, having all, it all closed up up front. Um, then, of course, we have the chrome bumper here underneath, no pitting there. And then down below, uh, we've got the lower balance along with the front air dam on the car. Now, we already kind of briefly touched on the hood here. Again, fiberglass hood, the fiberglass stinger style hood. It does have the hood pins. They are functional hood pins. So if you want to raise the hood up, you're going to have to take these out. But you can look at the gaps and the elevations on the hood. Again, for a fiberglass hood, this thing, in my opinion, fits very, very well. The windshield itself, no chips or cracks in that. Looks good. Nice set of windshield wipers there, too. And as far as the hood pins, we're going to go ahead and remove those now. And then we're going to open this hood up here. And we're going to take a look at what we've got for engine and drive line. Okay, so we got the hood open on the car, and uh, first off, being a fiberglass hood, you want to make sure you got the right hood springs on it, and these are the lightweight springs for fiberglass hoods, so that's a check on this car. As you can see underneath here, um, it's all been painted black um, with the bracing and so forth on the fiberglass hood. You've got the name tag on there too 
for the actual name of the company that does the the uh, hoods there in case you ever have any issues or if you want to call and order new products from them um, as far as the engine compartment itself all blacked out as it should be uh, even the cow back there the firewall uh, as far as the engine goes we'll go over that right now so as I stated earlier this is a uh, non-original, uh, non-numbers matching 350 cubic inch small block Chevy motor. You can see it's got the uh, fin aluminum uh, air cleaner housing on it. It's got the uh, heartbeat of America valve covers here with breathers. Underneath that air cleaner, as you can see on the front here, you've got FI Tech. This is throttle body fuel injection. So uh, this is going to you know, up the performance on this car considerably. It's been updated to HEI ignition on the car. A little better plug wires and so forth here. These are uh, Max Fire. Let me just uh, see here. Max Fire ignition plug wires. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, these are from Edelbrock. So those are going to work really good. Edelbrock, great name brand, uh, great company to deal with. As far as the intake, you've got a polished aluminum intake. Looks to be kind of like an air gap intake as it's got the, uh, the gap underneath it there to help cool everything. That's going to deliver your fuel and your air down through the motor. Um, as far as the other accessories, you've got aluminum pulleys on this car. You've got polished aluminum water pump. You've got both an electric and mechanical fuel pump. Um, not out of the ordinary on these cars. Um, they will sometimes use the electric pump to help prime it and once the motor's running it runs kind of off of that mechanical fuel pump. Got a nice aluminum radiator here for cooling with a shroud and electric fan. Now along with this throttle body injection it's a whole complete setup not just the throttle body and it's all here all good components here. Got a chrome alternator on here as well. Then when it comes to the exhaust We've got long tube headers, and then of course dual exhaust, dual Dynamax mufflers, kind of like a turbo style muffler, and then of course tailpipes that exit the way they should between the leaf spring and the rear quarter panel. Um, as far as the rest of the stuff under the hood, it is power steering, it is power brakes, and it is disc brakes up front and drum brakes on the rear, complete with the parking brake all hooked up and functional. All right, so we have our 67 Camaro convertible up on the lift. Uh, and as we do with all of our cars, we're gonna go through the complete underside with you, uh, going over the frame, floor, steering, suspension, braking system, um, exhaust, wheels, tires, drive line, you name it. We'll go over it here right now for you. And we'll start with the front as we always do. So up front here, we just have our stock cross member here on the frame. Um, that is all nice and straight up here. Doesn't look like it's been abused whatsoever throughout its time. Looks in very good condition. As far as the suspension on the front end, um, it has the stock uh, factory stamp steel components for the upper and lower control arms. Um, all of the ball joints are all in good shape. All the rubber dust boot covers, all intact on those. Uh, it does have a um, front sway bar here on it. The sway bar bushings at the frame, as well as the sway bar end links, those are all in good condition too. Um, we come back a little further, we go over the steering now. Uh, power steering on this car, you can see the tie rods here to the back sides of the A-arms, the drag link, the pitman arm, both tie rods nice and straight, uh, all the ball joints again in good condition with the rubber dust boot covers, and again you can tell everything's been greased and maintained very well on this car. Braking system, we do have power brakes, it is disc up front, drums down on the back, um, it's going to be just you know your typical GM disc brake components. So you'll be able to get you know parts and so forth at any auto parts store you might need to go to. Um, and then as far as wheels and tires, we'll just kind of complete the uh, suspension and steering with those. Uh, wheels and tires on this car, these are 17 inch Riddler wheels. Um, they're chrome, five spoke design, real nice wheel. And as far as tires go, Sumitomo HTR Z3 tires on all four corners, same tread pattern. And up front, we've got 225-45 ZR17s, 
and on the back 255-40ZR17. So just a little bit of difference there, a little wider, a little taller tire there. Um, let's come in now and we'll talk about the drive line here, right up through the center of the car. So as far as the motor goes, this is a non-original, non-numbers match, 350 cubic inch small block Chevrolet motor. It does have a chrome oil pan on it to help dress things up underneath there. Come back a little further to the transmission and we've got the Richmond T10 four-speed manual transmission. Of course, we've got the bell housing here and it does have the flywheel cover on the front of it to keep any kind of dirt or debris out away from that flywheel. Now, as far as the transmission and the engine, looking around the oil pan and all around the transmission, everything looks dry, free of leaks or drips. Even back here at the tail shaft where your seal is, where your slip yoke rides into there, that is nice and dry. Your transmission cross member, nice and straight the whole way across here, and the mount itself is in good shape too. Come back a little further, we've got our drive shaft, which is a balanced unit. Keeps a lot of that vibration out of the drive line. And then of course the rear end. So what we have here, this is a GM 10 volt rear. This is the 8.2 inch ring gear. As far as the gear in it, it is a 323 gear ratio. Now as you can see, as far as the suspension goes, they went with the mono leaf rear suspension and then a set of air shocks on the back easily adjustable just by using an air hose uh, on the Schrager valve that is on those as well. Uh, we've already been over the wheels and tires on the car so that all uh, has been going over. As far as the exhaust system on the car, uh, coming off of the heads we've got a set of long tube headers here. Dual exhaust all the way back, set of dual Dynamax mufflers here uh, and they're like a turbo style muffler. And then of course your tailpipes up over the rear end and then those exit out right between the leaf spring and the rear quarter panel on the car. That is how it should be. Now again, this is a convertible so you'll see a little bit of the extra bracing underneath the car here. You do find that on the convertibles. As far as the rest of the frame and the floors, the subframe on this car is nice and straight. Um, can't see any dings whatsoever in it. The body mounts are in good shape yet. As far as the floor goes, I don't see any patching or any holes to speak of. Everything looks to be good metal here. All the stamping lines are all in there, so it is all the correct metal. Um, like I said, all the bracing is there across the floors as well. And all of your drain plugs are all located where they should be. So that's the floors. Pinch wells are nice and straight up both sides and the rocker panels are good and solid on the car too from the underside here. When we get to the rear of the car, from what we can see of the trunk itself, the trunk pan is in good shape, no patching there either, good and solid metal, uh, fuel tank, no dents or dings in that, all of your mounting hardware, your straps and bolts and so forth, those are all in good shape. Of course, as always, fuel lines and so forth will run right along the bottom of the car here, nice and neat. Brake line, same thing. And with our brakes here, we do have the parking brake all hooked up too. So you've got all the correct, the front cables, the frame hooks, intermediate cables, and the rear cables going back to the drum brakes. So that is pretty much it for the underside of our car. So with that said, we're gonna get it down off the lift next.